What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So we are in the kitchen for this one. So basically, I mean, this one is almost like a full day of eating video because honestly, the foods I'm going to show you that I'm making um, are basically like the staples of my diet right now. I've been enjoying them so much that I eat them consistently pretty much daily. Um, so we're going to start with meal number one. Meal number one is going to be <laughs> very, very simple. I'll show you what I make for myself and then I'll show you what I make for Stacy. But essentially all this one is, um, is like a grilled sandwich. So um, the first thing I do is with this one, because I eat it consistently, I don't measure anything with this one. I just kind of eyeball it. But I go for about a serving of cheese, which is 30 grams of shredded cheese. So I'll literally just kind of sprinkle it around in the pan. And then once that melts, then I'll throw my piece of bread on and then I'll fry up my turkey breast. So I use five slices for myself. Um, and then for Stacy, I do three slices and she also does egg. So she does that. I don't enjoy it with egg. So I'm, yeah, it's very, very basic one. So I'm basically showing you how to make like a grilled cheese with some meat on it. But now that it's melted, I just throw on the bread, make sure it sticks and then flip it over. And then for my turkey, I literally just throw it on the pan as well, just to kind of heat it a little bit while the first piece of bread is toasting. Then I'll throw it on. I don't even add any condiments or anything. Um, Stacy does mayo. I don't. But very, very simple, basic. Doesn't have to be overly complicated to eat well and hit your macros. basically it you know just gotta grill it up make it nice and toasted and then uh yeah and it's the exact same for stacy's the only difference is i use this amazing little one egg wonder and i just do one egg and then i top it up to even it out with just egg white um and then i make hers the exact same way except she only gets three slices all right, so this is the finished product. So on the right is Stacy's, because you can see it's got the egg, and then that's mine. Sometimes I eat this with some sugar-free ketchup. Uh, most of the time I just eat it like that because I just enjoy it, but it's easy to get down, good macros on it, good dose of protein. Um, so yeah, that is meal number one. Very, very simple. All right, so I'm gonna show you a little bonus thing that I've been doing uh, every day. So I have two cups of coffee a day. I'm going to show you how I make it to get a little bit extra protein. So all I do is about a half scoop. Again, I don't, I haven't really been measuring, like strictly measuring anything, but about a half a scoop. I throw it in my cup of protein. I'm just using this rando protein that we bought when we were up north because I didn't pack any protein. Um, and then I throw some cinnamon in there. So not much, I just kind of sprinkle some in. And then right now, because pumpkin spice is life, we have the pumpkin spice creamer. And then I also put in some extra just pumpkin spice. And then a little bit of the creamer. Ooh, that was a lot. And then I just top it off with some coffee. And then the, the big thing here is you got to use a hand mixer or you can use like a blender. If you have like, just like a magic bullet or like a blender cup. The only thing is with that, you got to be careful because of the heat. It's going to cause it to pop. So 
I, if I do it with a blender, which I haven't in forever because we have the hand mixer now, um, usually I'll throw like an ice cube in the coffee just to cool it down. But this way, when I drink my two cups of coffee, I literally get 25 grams of protein with my morning coffee. And then usually after I finish those, that's when I'll eat my breakfast sandwich. Um, but yeah good way to just sneak some additional protein in. Okay, so I'm just prepping for meal number two. So this one, actually, I've been posting to my stories every once in a while, and people have been commenting and asking me how I make it. So we're making my ramen today. Um, what I do, so what I'm going to do right now anyway, is I'm going to just cut up and marinate the chicken for this. So we do one breast between Stacy and I. It's, uh, this one's about nine ounces. So we're, I, and like, I, like I said, I don't track anything. So I literally just eyeball it and give half to her, half to me. And that's just how I've been doing it. But I just kind of, slice it up and then if I see any like gross fat or veins then I'll usually just kind of trim that off there's the chicken Piece of garbage. Okay, so now for marinating the chicken. So, what I've been doing is I start with some naked sauce. So, it's just a soy sauce substitute, but I'll just splash some of that in there. We do hoisin. So I kind of eyeball it, but again, do about two tablespoons. And we also add some stubs, some hickory bourbon one today. I always kind of change it up. And like I find just changing up the marinade like changes the whole taste of the ramen. So again, we're gonna do about a, two tablespoons of that. And then for spices, I do paprika. I'm not shy on the paprika. A little bit of the tahini. Garlic powder. And black pepper. Then the secret ingredients. So I do about a half a teaspoon of baking soda just to tenderize the meat. And then I do about two teaspoons of cornstarch just to give it a coating on there and just allow everything to kind of stick. So that is everything I put in there. Nice and saucy. 
and then just kind of mix it up a bit and then throw it in the fridge and then uh, I will see you back to make the actual ramen. All right, so we are about to actually make the ramen now. So again, this one is very easy. Um, I have my own little system for this one. So in the small pot here, I just have some water. I'm going to boil some eggs. So I'm just going to turn that on, let that water get to a boil, and then we'll throw the eggs in there. For the chicken, I just fry them up on the pan with some cooking spray. All right, so I like to just cook up the chicken while the water is boiling. Um, but that being said, so for the ramen, we literally just use these. It comes in a five pack at Walmart. They're like, I don't remember if it's like three or four dollars, but um, for a five pack. So we cook up two of these. I don't start on the noodles until the chicken and the eggs are actually in the water and boiling so um yeah so essentially I just wait for the chicken to cook always check it with my meat thermometer just to make sure that it's cooked and then I don't overcook it and then it's super dry so um yeah we're just gonna wait for the chicken to cook and then once that water starts boiling we'll kind of get going a little bit more but super simple all right so the chicken is cooked the Water for the eggs is boiling, so I just drop those in there. Once I drop them in there, I always turn it down to like a seven on the stove, and then I typically will boil those for about seven minutes. Um, and then while that is happening, I just open up my ramen packs and I put them in the pot. So I don't actually use the stove to cook the ramen, but this pot just fits everything. And then I just use the lid to seal it to actually let the noodles sit and cook. I just sit them in like that and then there's the little flavor packets so I just dump both of those in there and then there's also these little seasoning oil packets yeah, put those in there too. And then in the kettle over here, I have 750 mils of water. So I'll just let that boil. Once that's at a rolling boil, then I'll pop it in the pot and let that cook a little bit. Looks like one of the eggs cracked a little bit, but yeah. So about six or seven minutes and then everything's going to be pretty darn close to done. We throw the eggs in, in a little bowl of ice um, with some cold water, let those sit for a bit while the noodles cook as well. And then it all kind of finishes at the same time. All right. So it's been seven minutes. This happened to start boiling at the exact same time that those eggs should be done. So all I do is pour all of the water in there. So the full 750 mils goes in there. And for right now, I literally just throw the lid on there. And then I let that sit. And then I usually stir it after about like four minutes. For the eggs, oh, this one broke real good. Slide them in there. And then we just let these sit for a while, let the eggs cool down so that they're easier to peel, let the noodles cook, and then peel the eggs and throw it all together. Okay, so the noodles are done, the eggs are done. I butchered them pretty bad. 
usually they're like perfect but so all I do now because because I don't measure anything I literally just dump some into one bowl And then I dump some in the next. Close enough. Then I just throw some chicken in. And that is it. So that's the bowl of ramen. So you're getting about four. I, I probably get about five ounces of chicken because I always give myself a little bit more. Um, so I get about five ounces of chicken raw, one whole egg, and then my ramen. So macros on this are actually pretty good. I'm pretty sure it's close to about... 40 grams of protein and then you got your carbs and fats at whatever but that is the ramen all right so we're gonna make some dessert for later so it's a high protein cereal treat i guess i saw it on instagram and was like i gotta try it so we're going to be using one serving so one cup or 40 grams of the Reese's puffs minis we have 50 grams of just a zero calorie syrup. And then one scoop of protein. For this one, I'm going to use the chocolate toffee. And then we're going to make some other ones using cinnamon toast. What is this one called? Yeah, cinnamon toast crunch and vanilla protein. But essentially all you do, so I already measured everything out. So 40 grams into the bowl. One scoop of protein into the bowl, and then the syrup. Grab a spoon. Apparently, you just mix this around and then you form it into like a puck. Place it on some parchment paper. Ugh. And then freeze it. Okay. It's looking better. It's looking better. Yeah, I don't I hope this tastes good because this would be a really convenient treat. Okay. So that's what it's going to look like. We're going to throw that in the freezer and then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is a, I'm also going to make some mini ones and I'm just going to try to make some small ones for the kids. 
All right, so we are back. We are doing meal number three. So this is going to be our dinner. It is uh, buffalo chicken taquitos. So it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for this one. So I have all my ingredients here, but we are starting by shredding this rotisserie chicken. So we're going to get chicken breast. The rotisserie chicken was only $8.99. It's going to be way faster, way more convenient, and it's super cheap. So we're going to shred this up throw it in this bowl, then we'll start mixing our ingredients. So I'm gonna shred this and then we're gonna get going. And blam. So we got 480 grams of shredded chicken in here. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the buffalo sauce. So there's 85 mils of buffalo sauce that we're throwing in there. They didn't say how much ranch seasoning. So we're gonna go big on the ranch, I guess. And we're just going to put that whole pouch in there. Then we have 90 grams of low fat cheese. Hundred and twenty grams of light cream cheese. Almost forgot what it was called. And then as well, they just add some extra seasoning to it. So we have garlic powder. They also didn't say how much to put of that. Onion powder. And paprika. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to blend this all up and we're going to heat up the corn tortillas and we'll start rolling them out all right so we got our tortillas warmed up so they're just white corn tortillas and we just want to heat them up just so that they're more pliable and then mixed up all of the ingredients with the chicken and now it should make 12 of these I don't know how many, how, how full to have these, but we'll see. I also don't know if these were the same size tortillas. Oh my gosh. Right, we're going to make like 50 of these. Yeah, that's too much. What do you mean? That looks fine. I thought they were much skinnier. Oh, we could have fit more in there. There we go. We want them stuffed. I like to eat. You're laughing. You're just not going to fit. You're not going to have enough filling for 12. Yeah, yeah, I will. Look how much is left. This was one. Boom. So that's how they're going to look. We're going to throw them on to this tray. Fill this out. I'm going to do that so that I don't waste your time and we'll be back when we're ready to throw them in the oven. All right. So I got all 12 rolled out here. I did have to take some out of the first one because I overloaded them. We're going to give them a quick spray with Pam. Then they're going to go in the oven. So we're going to preheat the oven. Um, we're going to have it at 380 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, for 20 to 25 minutes or until they're nice and crisp looking on top and then we will plate them and show you what it looks like all right so the final product is here some of the taquitos cracked open and broke the ugly ones are on the bottom but overall they look pretty good next time i probably wouldn't use the corn tortillas because i find them a lot drier harder to work with. Um, I'd probably just do like a normal wheat flour one, but going to give these a taste test. So we will grab ourselves a plate with a couple and give these a try. They look amazing. Okay. So we're going to give them a taste test. It says to dip it in ranch. I also grabbed sour cream because I felt like that's good combination. So they're so messy looking. Yeah. So Ooh. I'm going to try it just regular first. 
And then we're going to try Dipton Ranch. Mm -hmm. Really good. I think I'd prefer it without the corn tortilla and the like normal flour tortilla, but still very good. The filling is awesome. Mm -hmm. The shell, I probably could have cooked them a little bit more just to give them more of a crunch as opposed to they're, they're almost still like a little bit chewy, mm -hmm. but tastes good. I would definitely make these again. We made them like really quick, especially because of the rotisserie chicken. Um, now I'm going to try it with this sour cream though, because I feel like this is, this yeah. is what's going to be amazing. I agree. I'm not super big on buffalo. I think I would have preferred these without the buffalo drizzle. Better with sour cream. Mm -hmm. Like amazing. Mm. We're sour like, cream people. Without though. sour cream, it was probably like, like dipping in ranch would have been okay, but I'm not a big fan of like just dunking in ranch. Mm. Probably would have been like a seven out of 10 with the sour cream, like right up there, like nine. 10 out of 10. Yeah, super good. But that is it for the dinner meal. I'm going to make a special little dessert, high protein dessert. So macros on these, by the way, really good. Um, low calorie. I think they were like 135 calories, 15 grams of protein per taquito. So you're getting a good dose of protein in there. They taste amazing. Yeah, they're really so. good. Can't complain, but we will see you for dessert. All right. So for the dessert, you saw us mix it. We threw it in the freezer. This is how it turned out. So it's actually pretty huge. Um, we just chopped them up because we all wanted to taste test them. So this is the Reese's Pieces one with the chocolate and toffee um, protein powder. So one of these whole things would be 25 grams of protein just from the protein powder alone. So almost like a huge rice crispy square kind of looking thing. But, and then we have cinnamon toast crunch with vanilla protein powder. So who's excited to try this? Okay, we're gonna try each one. So there's, I chopped up some little ones. Yep. Yep. That's a big one. You don't want one? Are they actually sticky? They're a little sticky. That's okay. All right. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. It's cold, though. I hate protein shakes. This is a good way for me to eat protein powder. This, this oddly bad. reminds me. It's very sticky. I remember those little marshmallow peanut yes, butter things. 100%. That's what these taste like. Mm -hmm. Is there yogurt in this? The, so I just got a huge yogurt in mine. Cereal is very chewy. Mm -hmm. But it's good though. It's thick. Very. It is very chewy. Though. Very sweet. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Connor doesn't like Dad. it. So, I think this one, the one. This one, when I made it, it smelled like a cinnamon bun. So it smelled extremely good. But here. this one's cinnamon toast crunch. So cinnamon toast crunch. It doesn't seem as sticky. Here we go. Oh, that one was way softer. Mm -hmm. This Whoa. one's way better. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot less protein powder flavored. Yeah. I hate the black one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's way easier to eat, too. Simeon mm -hmm. Toast Crunch. Phenomenal. So I've been more or less protein. <laughs> I feel like they'd taste a lot better if they were warm. Well, they'll melt. Mm -hmm. So, I would say it's a solid like seven and a half, eight out of ten for a good high protein treat. 
Very sticky, but not bad. So I have to try this out. It was super easy to make, but that is it for the video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, make sure to give it a like. Comment down below if you want to see other videos like this or if you have any ideas for recipes for us to try. Subscribe, turn your notifications on, and until next time, peace. peace.